I remember absolutely nothing of the, the day that the uh, cardiac arrest happened. It's April, the next thing I know it's like mid-May and I got tubes down my throat and I don't know how I got there. <laughs> the days leading up to the cardiac arrest were pretty normal and boring to be honest. The night before the cardiac arrest happened there was an episode that we thought was a panic attack. So we went to sleep and then at 4.30 a.m. on April 21st his heart stopped. We were sleeping and he just started making sounds, kind of like sleep screaming, like when somebody has a bad dream. He used to get nightmares after the army, so my brain was trained to wake up. He did not snap out of it, did not react, and so I immediately knew something was wrong. I turned on the lights, dialed 911, put it on loudspeaker and started CPR. The most important thing when somebody's heart stops is to immediately start CPR. Any time that the heart's not beating, that's time that organs like the brain, the kidneys, the liver, all of your organs are not getting blood flow. For a summer job where I had to work with kids, I had to get a Red Cross CPR course. It did help a lot, even though I didn't remember all of the details and everything. Um, it helped me not hesitate because it could feel very weird and awkward to put your hands on somebody's chest and start like, you know, pushing down super hard. It's very important to get to try it out first. So when you actually need to do it in an emergency, you're not doing it for the first time. The EMS got there really quick. We got Got lucky. I mean, you know, he was a small town. Plus, um, the EMS guys said they were on the road already, sort of nearby. So they were there in under um, under 10 minutes. It really saved his life. There wasn't much more for us to do when he got to us. Just supportive care, stabilize him with life support until his heart came back. He was successfully resuscitated and got involvement of the emergency medical services, the emergency room, the intensivists, professional specialties, and then uh, the rehab was also very important. So a lot of members of this community were involved and I'm very proud to see the uh, good outcome. The entire chain of uh, people that were involved and in keep me alive, it seems like a whole lot of fuss, you know, for me. That's why we came to see them all today is to know that their efforts really they work out sometimes, you know, they, they don't always get to see the, the fruits of their labor. Here I am, a guy that was dead for a while, you know, I'm back and living life normal, happy person. You really can save someone's life by just learning the basics of CPR. Included with that is how to use an AED. Those two things can really save your loved one's life. When patients don't have CPR started, it turns very fatal very quickly. So we're very lucky to have Nicole Vergara here who does our CPR training in our hospital in the community and has done such a great job at bringing education out into the community. So we're just lucky as a facility that Michael's case, his wife started CPR, EMS was close by, our ER team gave every everything they had at this case and he was able to walk out of here and continue living. You never know when somebody's gonna keel over and you know in the grocery store or something like that your CPR could make sure they get to see their kids again. If you're interested in learning CPR you can reach out we can set up a training for you.